So training the next generation of refinished technicians really starts with the paint preparation piece. And uh, that's why I think it's so cool that PPG has put together a new two-day training program on paint preparation for those paint preparation technicians. Uh, with me today is Aaron Deshawn from PPG, and we're going to talk a little bit about that class. So uh, what's the first thing you go through in this paint preparation class? I uh, think safety first. The first thing we cover in any preparation class are workplace hazards and why personal protection equipment is so important to them. In the case of a painter or a prepper, we really stress the importance of protecting the eyes, the ears, the skin, and respiratory system. Uh, so what are some of the specific types of workplace hazards that you'll cover in this class? We cover a number of topics related to workplace hazards. Uh, this includes chemical compounds found in many refinished products, GHS classifications, and labeling so that someone new to the shop environment understands what the warning labels mean on the products that they're using. We then show the students how to obtain product safety data sheets and then discuss proper waste management procedures. And so once we've got safety covered, we just jump right out in the shop and start painting? <laughs> Not just yet. From there, we need to talk about basics. We go into paint fundamentals. In this section, we cover the differences between thermoplastic and thermoset resins. Okay. We go into the optimal standard conditions for painting and the 15 degree rule. What's the 15 degree rule? For every 15 degrees increase in temperature, all of your dry times and pot life will be cut in half. Every 15 degree decrease in temperature, everything will be doubled. So that's probably important to you know, think about when you're in a colder climate or a warmer climate uh, yeah. because you've got products that are labeled specifically for curing and dry times uh, based yeah. on temperature. Absolutely, and all of our product data sheets, all of those recommended dry times that you see, all of those are done at 70 degrees Fahrenheit, 50% relative humidity okay. with 60 to 100 feet per minute of airflow. Okay. So not all shops have that luxury and sure. they need to keep in mind what are my conditions. We're trying to get across that paint revolves around temperature and time. If you want to achieve the best results, you need to choose the products that are optimal for the size and temperature conditions of whatever job is at hand. So what's next? From there, we go over vehicle substrate identification. Okay. which might sound a little bit odd, but if we have new people coming in, we need to make sure they understand the difference between aluminum and steel parts, plastic and carbon fiber or fiberglass. If they don't, these parts could be handled incorrectly and that can promote some cross-contamination, which can cause issues down the line. What types of issues could that potentially cause? In the case of aluminum and steel, you have dissimilar metals mm -hmm. there and that can cause some rust. It won't happen right away, but if you go a few years down the line and you start seeing that creep out, that's from that cross-contamination mm -hmm. and that you know, substrate not being handled properly. The dreaded galvanic corrosion. Yes, exactly. Okay, very good. And what about plastic? Are there some special preparation steps for plastics? Absolutely. Coming out of the factory, raw plastic bumpers will have a mold release agent on them. And if not cleaned or prepped properly, that can cause some adhesion issues. What are some of the common contaminants that you uh, talk about in the class? Things like road dirt, cement dust, and tree sap are very common, and those can be removed with a waterborne cleaner. There are other contaminants like wax, grease, tar, and oil that are a little bit more difficult to remove. Those require the use of a solvent-borne cleaner. So if that is required, it's important to note the shop needs to select a solvent-borne cleaner for compliant or national rule areas. That's based on their local legislation. So it's important to make sure that we're using both the water-based cleaner as well as the solvent-based cleaner. Absolutely. There are some contaminants. You can wipe it all day with a solvent-borne cleaner and, it'll, and it's never going to come off. But if you go back over it with a water-borne cleaner, it'll take it off. So it's very important to do both. And so you cover that type of information in the course as well? Absolutely. We go over pre-primed plastic bumpers, raw plastic bumpers, and pre-painted plastic bumpers because each one is different and they require different preparation processes. I suppose without a good substrate to, to start with, uh, you just, uh, the, the, all kinds of challenges potentially. Yes, absolutely. I mean, with bumpers, if a prepper is not following the right procedure and they don't get all that mold release agent off or they don't sand the pre-painted one properly, even if they don't test the pre-primed one, if it's a 1K or 2K primer, mm -hmm. That can cause some issues. Okay. If it's handled incorrectly, again, adhesion is a big thing, or you could see some sand scratches. And so after we've got through the safety and the preparation of the panels, what's next? From there, we go into selecting the correct sandpaper and the correct undercoats, because okay. again, it's very important to make sure you're using the right products for the job. From there, we introduce the students into spray guns, okay. and we go over not only selecting the correct spray gun, but also the correct fluid tip setup. 
depending on what you're spraying, you may need to have a larger or smaller fluid tip. We also show the students how to adjust those guns to ensure that they're using a proper spray pattern. Sounds like there's an awful lot to the uh, refinish the spray gun part of it. There is, and this is not something that the students are going to master in one class. This is something that takes practice, okay. but with the fundamentals that we teach, they can go back to the shop, they can practice these techniques until they feel comfortable with the okay. process. So two days is an awful lot of uh, information to digest, uh, some classroom, some hands-on? Absolutely. It is a lot of information, so we do try and break it up between classroom learning and hands-on just to keep the students interested, keep the class moving. So each student has the opportunity to suit up in the proper PPE. They can clean and sand different substrates. They can spray undercoats and assemble spray guns. So they get a lot out of it, sure. as well as learning how to prep all these different bumpers. So the students enjoy the class. We've gotten good feedback on it. And from there, once they go home, if they have any questions, they can always contact us. They can refer back to the training materials they received in class, or they can go directly to PPG's training website. Okay. So awesome. a lot of options there. That's fantastic. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's great because it, um, you know, a lot of these paint, these paint pe preparation technicians don't typically get the chance to maybe leave the facility and come and get training. So I think it's wonderful that PPG's put together a program specifically tailored to them. Thank you. That's awesome. Yeah, absolutely. It's really good to have something go back to the basics and just make sure that we're covering everything. So if somebody's interested in signing up for this class, what do we do? They can do a couple different things. They can go to the website and get more information about the class okay. to be sure if this is something they want to do. And then they can talk to their local PPG territory manager and their local distributor to get signed up that way. Fantastic. Well, again, I think it's awesome that you guys are doing this for, uh, for the paint prep technician. And it's been a pleasure talking to you today. Thanks. You too, Jason. Thanks.